What's up everybody, Dad Tech TV here, and today we're continuing my journey to the ECPPT with buffer overflows. First a little update on my channel, I'm going to start bringing you content weekly. Still working out the perfect day based on schedule, but weekly you should see a new video from me. I'm going to be expanding outside of just training and certs, but this is where I'm starting to get some content up. I've also set up a Twitter and Instagram, which I'll link in my description, so come check me out over there, along with setting up a new web page to share additional content and maybe blog a little bit. But don't forget to follow me on YouTube because this is where a majority of my content will be. So jumping right into the PTP, Penetration Testing Pro Course. I'm following their lessons in order exactly as they provide them, not jumping around. So I'm starting off with the system security piece. There's six modules in here and I've done three so far. It's taking a little bit longer than I had thought it was going to take, but that's because I've gone over this content multiple times because I'm really interested in this piece. A note about this section is that the course so far is all in the Windows environment, which is different than the PTS because in the PTS you concentrated primarily on Kali Linux right from the start. And I'm sure this course will also go into Kali Linux, but for now, Windows environment. So module one gets right into architectural fundamentals. It talks about 32-bit and 64-bit OSs. It gets into the registers, the stack, and how stack frames work. From here, you start looking at machine code and assembly language, which is much lower level than most people are used to. So it's a good kind of intro to how that works. It shows exactly how things are pushed and popped from the stack. They get into the immunity debugger so that you can visually see how things work following the registers and what they're doing. All of this is base knowledge that's going to start explaining buffer overflows and how they work. So at the end of this first module, they actually go into some of the security implementations that are out there, including ASLR, DEP, and Canary. By the end of module one, I'm already starting to notice a difference between the PTS and the PTP course, with the PTP being much more in-depth and giving much more information, so I'm pretty happy about that. So it's definitely the logical next step from PTS. Module two then begins to talk about assemblers, debuggers, and some other tools. They talk about NASM as the assembler, and they actually walk you through installing that they do mention some of the other assemblers that are out there. There's gonna be much more coding in here in assembly. Uh, and they also introduce some C++. For the compiler, they choose dev C++, um, which is a pretty nice utility and free for the Windows environment. So if you're not familiar with C++, you're probably gonna to wanna to brush up a little bit. Uh, you don't need to be able to write C++, but you are gonna to have to follow along with their code and then you actually break that code down with a debugger and then you follow it within the debugger. They then continue into which debuggers you'll be using. Obviously, they've already started with immunity in the first module. They continue that in module two. Um, they mention some of the other popular debuggers, specifically IDA. Uh, however, IDA and IDA Pro actually have a cost to them with immunity being free. So that's why they focus on immunity and it's a pretty nice debugger from what I can see, at least for a beginner. Moving into module three, this is where we actually get into buffer overflows and exploiting a buffer overflow. They talk about specific assembly commands that are susceptible to buffer overflow. They do mention though that in higher level languages, um, they're not as susceptible to buffer overflow. They briefly discuss how to find buffer overflows. Um, it's kind of a short portion and then they go into actually exploiting the buffer overflow. They show different tools to help you with that. Uh, including some Ruby scripts, and they actually walk you through the code that they have provided that you can exploit, and then walk you through the exploitation process of that code, which is really nice because that's kind of what the lab is. The lab is basically giving you and providing you with the tools to actually go through exactly what they're doing in this module. They also talk about uh, additional tools beyond that a little bit, and by the end of the module, not only have you exploited a buffer overflow, but you've 
executed, well, we'll call it malicious code, but it's not really malicious code. It shows you through the debugger and through buffer overflows how you can actually get additional code to execute that shouldn't have executed, which is really nice because they're showing you that full process. So this first piece, the security module that they're doing here, tries to take a huge topic and provide an overview of the basics needed to execute your first buffer overflow. So they're taking a lot of information and trying to kind of condense it or at least just give you the basics of what you need to make this happen. So throughout this portion of the course, you know, they talk, hey, this is not a course that's going to teach you assembly. This is not a course that's going to go into depth with the immunity debugger. But they provide links to other reading so that you can actually learn that. So throughout this, the first three modules, I keep asking myself, hey, do I want to click those links and start really getting into this? Or do I want to stick with the content they're providing to get the cert? So because I'm going to be doing these YouTube videos, I'm sticking just with the content here to get the cert. And then later on, after I'm done with that, I'm probably going to look more in depth into buffer overflows and a lot of the reading resources that they've provided. Along with slides, they provide additional materials, specifically so far all the code that they go through. So they're providing you with their C++ code, uh, assembly code, and they're also showing you exactly where to download um, all the software that they talk about and walk you through some of the installs. The lab section provides a Windows machine. Uh, I haven't actually logged into it yet, um, and I'll explain that in a minute, but basically from what I understand, the Windows machine is a Windows 8 machine with a special config and security features turned off on it. Now I overlooked that. <laughs> so what I did is that I actually started downloading their materials, started setting up my machine, and that was a bad idea because I'm running on Windows 10, and Windows 10 has a lot of security functionality to prevent buffer overflows. So when I was trying to walk through the last piece of this, it wasn't actually working, and it's because the security features are turned on in Windows 10, whereas their lab has a lot of things turned off. Um, so I need to log into that lab next and just go through this last piece again to make sure I'm comfortable with everything that they went through. Videos that they provide, as always, are a great addition to their content. Most of the videos so far have focused on debugging of the code and walking you through everything that they're talking about within the slides. And then the last video actually goes through that buffer overflow and shows you how they're doing it. So I'm very happy with those videos. One of the interesting pieces here is that they talk about Dev C++ being the compiler they're going to use, but then at one part they actually jump over into Visual Studio. Um, I found that kind of interesting. Along with that, two of the scripts, the Ruby scripts that I downloaded to my machine, I had to use different switches to get them to work the way that they were showing. Um, so I had to use the help command, so make sure whenever you're running scripts or commands that you know to use help if the syntax isn't working correctly. They also suggest that you set up your own Windows XP machine for additional learning, and that's because Windows XP really had no security to prevent buffer overflows. However, I'm not really looking to set up a Windows XP machine just for that right now. Maybe in the future I'll do that, though. So overall, great content so far. Things are really coming along with this as far as what it's providing to me and what I'm learning, and I'm really happy with the course. I have also started my notes. If you saw my PTS course, I like taking notes. Um, so here I have a bunch of different uh, scripts or commands that they've shown. Um, just some notes on registers, uh, on the stack, um, the assemblers, the compilers, different things like that. So I'm really happy with my notes so far. They're a little bit sloppy, but they're coming along. And I think they're going to help me with the cert in the end. So I am excited about this still. I'm very excited. It's definitely more technical and more in-depth than the PTS. And it was definitely a great next step from the PTS to continue my learning in security and penetration testing. So I'm going to be moving into modules 4, 5, and 6. So make sure you click subscribe to get my latest content. And thanks for tuning in.